let's start so last class we studied a block cipher and today we'll see how to use these block ciphers that we call is mode of operation so these are the three references it's taken primarily from um, Berkeley's book this lovely book you should read this it's not very long it's just very crisp and then this book is a very good actually Berkeley uh, contents have been taken largely from this book okay so we'll look try to cover these uh, topics although we may not have sufficient time possibly we'll see if time permits and we'll also cover the last one the counter mode ctr mode okay so so far we have seen we are we have this we have been discussing about symmetric key encryption so we know that there are symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption so right now we are into symmetric key encryption where the same key is being used at both ends okay all right so we have seen this right so we have a text that we want to encrypt using the key and then uh, this encryption algorithm we have looked at 2x d a, uh, aes and des okay and then same algorithm we use here to decrypt the cipher text using the same key and we get the plain text and we have seen how to do this using aes and des and it has three properties that we have seen correctness efficiency and security then we <coughs> came discuss our ind cpa security uh, Okay, uh, indistinguishability uh, uh, method, and then we have studied one time pad. Okay, and then we have come to description of block ciphers. In block, we have seen that uh, it can encrypt only a block. Encryption algorithm could be anything. It could be AES or DES. Okay and uh, however we take a block of n bits and using k bits of key and using the algorithm whatever algorithm it is aes or des we produce n bits of output okay and that's the reason we call it block this is a block of data right that we encrypt or decrypt okay all right so we have seen that in the last class and properties of course are correctness efficiency and security so we have looked at des okay uh, this is the method then we have looked at aes which has key size of 128 bits but we can also use uh, keys of 196 and 256 okay block size is always 128 so when we say block encryption method it means that block is well defined okay both in aes and ds okay so whatever be the key size, the block size remains the same, which is 128 bits. Okay, all right. It's 16 bytes. Okay. All right. All right. So please go through this. Uh, we have already studied this in detail. So we will not discuss any further okay so today we look at modes of operation and then these possibly these three modes so why do we need modes of operation so we have studied block ciphers which take 128 bit of block size or 128 bits of data okay and use the key and produce output of the same size the 128 bits same size i am not telling the same output right i mean they essentially in between is encryption algorithm which uses this the key and data that way all right now the only thing that you see here is that only defines at the level of a block key name is the same now what happens if the size is larger than block if the input the file that you want to encrypt is more than 128 bits then you will do something right that's what we call is mode of operation 
okay this is one aspect right second aspect is that uh, I, you know if the same data you know here if you have 250 let's assume 256 bits so another block of 128 bits and which is similar to this one then we, if you are using the same encryption algorithm because we use the same encryption algorithm on a file and use the same key then output also is similar now this will fail ind cpa test okay and we'll reveal something so now we need to do something about it because you don't know what the file or, or original data you want to encrypt okay all right so it will reveal some information okay for it so we'll look at so what we are doing now when we have we have just one block of data available so one block of data is 128 bits okay we use a key let's assume this also 128 bit or whatever or it could be higher also right and then we produce a, a cipher text of 128 bits okay all right now suppose we have to encrypt uh, 256 bits then it's very simple right we can take two of these okay so this 128 bits here and another plus and uh, you know 120 next 128 bits are this one and use the same key and produce the output so this is one first 128 bits this second 128 bits of message and then we have the outputs here okay so note that we are using the same key twice this is 128 bits first 128 bits second 128 bits and then we are using the same key okay all right so now let's assume that this text is same as the, the other text this 128 bits exactly same as this one or you just duplicate it then this cipher text will be similar to the cipher text here okay so it's basically we are revealing some information right to uh, somebody right eve or mallory okay and this is not nice because it's, it will leak information okay so now we need to uh, find out ways so that we bring in little bit of difference as assuming that these two blocks are have same input how can we do something what can we do such that these ciphertexts differ what can we do any idea you don't have control over input text right do we have control over input text whatever your file contains suppose you are encrypting a file whatever the file is it has to be encrypted you can't change bits in a file you can't change even a single bit so this will remain the same can you change the key no same key is used for everything in that file otherwise you can't do decryption okay so the key remains the same okay then we have to do something we'll have to bring in some randomness that's about mode of operation any question okay so let's go ahead the first is that we call ecb mode electronic code book mode okay now this is very simple okay here is a the original plain text that we have we split into number of plain, uh, blocks this is block one block two and block three okay and then we have cipher text one cipher text two cipher text three okay this is the first step so encryption of message m which is split into three uh, texts here uh, three blocks say p1 p2 p3 we are using same encryption algorithm say aes let's assume aes and we have three outputs okay which we call c1 c2 c3 okay all right okay so this is 
not so right now we are still in the preamble we are defining how can we bring in little randomness this is not so we what we have is aes ecb okay which is ecb mode is not ind cpa secure because you know this will if p1 is same as p2 then c1 is same as c2 okay then it will make some it will it will reveal some information okay so and ecb is also deterministic now <clears throat> compare this to one time pad one time pad is output is not deterministic because every time you are changing the key but here we are, we are using the same key so it's a deterministic so ecb mode is flawed okay all right so now we need to do something about it okay so because it will leak information if one block say uh, is same as the second block say here we are using terminology M mi or we can use it pi and pj okay if this one is same as this one other one then ci is equal to cj and this is visible to Mallory or Eve, and is going to leak information. So now, how is it going to leak information? Just look at this diagram. This is a file that you have, okay, which is image, okay. And if you run ECB into this one, then what you'll get is this one, because you know relative changes are the same, okay. If there is a, you know, suppose this represents a block. The next block will also so the same. Now this block is color is being changed from black to such so so let's assume gray, some shade of gray. This will also be gray, but overall shape will be visible. Okay, so it means that we are leaking information. Okay, and uh, you know sometime, sometime back, Adobe, a great company, right, it started using encryption instead of hashing okay so what the, uh, what they did is that they used the des encryption algorithm in ecb mode rather than hashed and in 2013 as a result of that 153 million account passwords were leaked after that you know a lot of people became aware that you know these modes are not very safe because they reveal some information and they started using hashing note hashes are one way function while these are encryption decryption is not one way it's a both way function it's a bidirectional function right okay so what can we do so, so we know ecb mode is not ind cpa secure because it's deterministic that we learned. So what we, and now we can bring in a little bit of randomness in the picture, right? So now the method that we have is called CBC. So ECB, we found that this method reveals information. It leaks information. So we can work on this and improve it. Now, note that with the constraint that we cannot touch this part, right? Because it's input. Okay, we cannot touch key. Key remains the same for the whole file. Then we'll have to do some jugad, you know, to bring randomness. Okay, and that's what we call is CBC, cipher block chaining mode. Now, so what we can do here is that We can bring in a little bit of randomness, and that's what we call is uh, is called initial randomness. We introduce in the system and use that randomness in other blocks as well, right? So first block is given something called initialization vector IV, okay, which is a random n bit string. Note that input is of size, a block is of size n bits, and then we are using IV which is also of n bits, okay? And we define first output. So we note that output is, what we have seen is 
C1, C2, C3, concretination of these three. And in the beginning, we add C0, which is nothing but IV. We'll see how to decrypt it later, right? So IV is a nonce that is a use once unique value. It means that every time we are using encryption, the value of that is changing. Suppose same file you do encrypt twice. Okay, the value of nonce will change in uh, every uh, attempt, right? Okay, so you can try this if the method that you are using to encrypt a file uses nonce, if it's being used in CBC mode, then every time you produce an encrypted version, it will be different, right? So you can compare two encrypted files and you can see that it's a different. It means that you're using nonce. Nonce, it means that you're using that value that you're introducing only once. It does not mean it's a random. Okay, you can use counter also, right? One, two, three, four, five, because this counter will now not repeat until some time frame, right? Okay, uh, because ultimately, you know, any number has to repeat in a uh, digital world. Okay, but this duration is very, very long, so we can treat this as a random thing. Okay, uh, use it once, nonce. But random is that we picked up one out of, say, one million values. Even then, the probability is very low that subsequently you'll get the same value. Okay, so, uh, so instead of nonce, we can also use a random number. All right, so we'll not get into mathematics of this. So now it CBC mode looks something like this. Okay, so we introduce initialization vector IV. Okay, so this is IV, which is of 128 bits. Okay, you take the plain text here. This is a block one which we'll call it P1, P2, P3, okay? And then exclusive discipline text is a block. And we have seen what block looks like, right, earlier. So take an exclusive with or with this initialization vector and you get this output. Now use the key to encrypt this. Uh, use the key using this encryption method. Okay, this could be AES or DES. Whatever you are using here in the first block, you'll have to use the same algorithm in all blocks. Okay, note the key remains the same. So you get output here, okay? So output of this uh, will be influenced by in initialization vector. But now it what so it's so if p1 is equal to p2 is equal to p3 then now p1 will look different but p2 and p3 will look the same output of this it's a c2 and c3 will look the same so we have not brought in the randomness to other blocks okay so what we can do now okay is to bring in randomness to other blocks so what can we do Okay, so what we can do is that take the output here because this is now this output is not deterministic. Or well, it's deterministic, but there is a we introduce a randomness here and use this here as an input instead of IV. And then you exclusive or uh, and get some output and then use as an input uh, to the cipher using the key you get output and so on, right? And how about the third one? Use the same thing. So you introduce here, take this output and then bring it in here. Okay, now you have three ciphertexts available, C1, C2, C3. Now, if you send this C1, C2, C3 to recipient, so let's say you miss uh, Alice sending it to Bob, and Bob also has the same key. Can Bob decrypt it?
Anyone, please answer. Can Bob decrypt it if he receives only C1, C2, C3 and the key? Are you able to understand what is being taught? Or is it too fast? I guess it is not possible because initialization vector is not there. Very works. good. Excellent. And what's your name? Randomization. Sir so Saurabh. Saurabh, right? Yes. Thank sir. you. Send me an email. You get extra two points. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very good. So now what we can say is that the output that is being sent, that will be sent will include C0, which is nothing but IV. So you are sending IV plus C1, C2, C3. Now IV is in plain text. Okay, all right. So now this is P1, P2, P3, use initialization vector, you get these outputs and then you have IV as a first element, then C1, C2, C3. This is what Eve sees. Or this will also be sent to Bob. Okay, now C1, C2, C3 plus IV is known to Eve, but Eve does not have key, so Eve cannot decrypt it. All right? Okay, all right. So this is the, this is the description of how we get uh you know the output all right so decryption is very similar this was encryption now this the here is decryption so you take cipher text and then use the key to decrypt it and then whatever the output is exclusive or with iv vector okay and you get is plain text similarly take this output you know, which is C1, okay, you first you take uh, P2 exclusive, uh, then use encryption algorithm, decrypt it, and then exclusive or with C1, and you get the plain text and so on and so forth, right? So this is how we do decryption. So again, depicted here. So output will be P1, P2, and P3. Any question? It's very simple, right? Now, this is the mathematics. So, we're not going to go into it. So, it's very simple. How do we get the P1 back, right? It's just nothing but exclusive words. You can just go through it. So, now, if you just take this image and use uh, AES in ECB mode, first was the ECB mode that we studied wherein we didn't bring in randomness, then we can, this will be output. So you can make out something from this one, right? Okay. While if it is in CBC mode, it's very difficult to find out what it is. Okay, because it's bringing a lot of randomness. Like you can see here something. Okay, all right. Now, did you notice something here? Can we, improve the efficiency can we paralyze this let's look only at encryption now can encryption be paralyzed now you first take the first block say p1 and then exclusive it or with uh, iv and you get the output and that output you give it to encryption algorithm use the key and then get the output here which is ciphertext c1 now you are using this C1 as an input to the encryption algorithm because first you'll have to do exclusive or with plain text, which is P2 and so on, right? So you'll have to, so P2 cannot start until this input is available. It means that when PA1 has completed the process, when C1 is available, only then P2 can start. Similarly, when C2 is available, uh, you know, encryption of P3 can start. 
Okay, so when C2 is available, you will do exclusive order, then you use encryption algorithm and so on. Okay, all right. How about decryption? Can we decrypt parallelly? Look at this now. Can we decrypt it parallelly? Now note that C1, C2, C3 is available. Okay, these three are available in the beginning from encryption, right? Keys are available. IV is available. Now, so now here we use a C, C1, use encryption algorithm, use the key and output is available. And then exclusive or with IV. This, so now we have plain text P1 available. Note that C2, operation of C2 does not depend on P1, right? So now, since C1 is available right in the beginning, the operation of this can start. Okay, so it means that now we can parallelize decryption algorithm. Okay, because it requires only ciphertext as input. So you can note this. So now CBC mode, when you are encrypting, then it is cannot be parallelized, but when you're decrypting, you can parallelize it. Okay, next question is that we have assumed so far the message size is a multiple of block size. Okay, what happens if it's not multiple of block size? Then we'll have to use some method, right? What do you do in case of Ethernet? Any one of you who have studied uh, networking know that there is some padding is done at the end. Okay, suppose suppose uh, IP packet is very small or Ethernet frame is very small, right? And there is a need for Ethernet pad, uh, Ethernet frame to be of certain size. Then what we do is we put some dummy bits, right? Which we call it pad padding so bring it to certain size okay similarly if the message size or original message size is not multiple of block size then we can do the padding okay all right this is very common method right but how do we pad that differs from one scheme to another scheme uh, one one uh, one protocol to another protocol so here what we see here is that Okay, we can pad the message until it's a multiple of block size. So at the end, if you know input, you don't have control. The input file that you're receiving for encryption or original message that you're receiving encryption is not control of algorithm, right? So it's a user thing, right? So user can have any length of the message, but now you cut it into blocks. The last block will have less value than 128 bits. Okay, less number of bits than 128. So now remaining bits you can, remaining space that's available because we have to make it 128 bits. You can fill it with some number. Okay, or some patterns of zeros and, but what is that number that we have to fill in? That's the trick, okay? So we have to add dummy bytes at the end of message until it becomes proper length. Okay, and then when we are doing decryption, then we'll have to remove this padding. Okay, what do we do? Uh, suppose we, you know, you have created the last block has, say, let's assume 50 bits, one, zero, one, 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 whatever. The remaining uh, 58 bits, can you fill it with zeros? No. It doesn't work. How do you know where the pad is actually starting? So something that you are filling in here must reveal something. Give information to receiver that these are all dummy bits. Same problem exists if you uh, fill this with ones. Because you don't know where, you know, what is the message and what uh, what is dummy bits, right? 
Now, what happens in case of some protocols, you also have in the header of a message, in case of networking, you have a length field. The length can tell what is going to be actual number of bytes available and remaining can be treated as a padding. But here we have to find out a way. Okay, so what we can do is uh, that if you have to pad this, then we let's assume that we need to pad this message, and this is thirteen byte long, and we have you know one twenty eight bit block which is essentially sixteen byte. So we need to have three bytes so so out of 128 or you know 16 byte or 128 bits we have 13 bytes of data so these three bytes have to be filled in as a pad and this number that we fill in must reveal what this length is three bytes so what we can do is that we can fill here three bytes as a value of 333 three. now of course you know you let to convert this into equivalent byte or you know so uh, the, the, so basically zero 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 whatever right because you are using eight bits right so at the five zeros and zero one one so five zero yeah six zeros and one one okay so if you fill in this pattern then you can make out all right okay so I'm not going to get into details and correctness proof of this. You can find out from the book if you're interested. So now we can say that uh, whatever space is left out, so let's say four bytes are left out, then fill it with four, 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 etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? And so on. It's shown here, and this scheme is called PKCS number seven. Now, can we say AES CBC is IND CPA secure? Yes, because you know key is the same, you know, but okay, how can we say that key is the same, but IV will every time, you know, we do encryption on a message and IV will change, hence the output will change. And hence, even between cannot make out what's happening. Now, if we reuse the IV, because now we have said that IV initialization vector is an announce which can be used only once. If you use IV, then of course you will lose IND CPA capability. Okay, so this slide says that if you use, there are two messages, say M1 and M2. It has three blocks, P1, P2, P3. P1, P2, P3 in the first and second one, P1, P2, P4. And P1, P2, we note that these are the same. Right? Okay. Now, if we are using CBC mode and we are using IV, which is not used, reused, then it does not reveal any information that P1, P2 are the same. But if you use the same IV, then output will look same. Okay, hence IV has to be nonce or it has to be changed. Okay, that's the message. Okay, so now this is the same thing that we have used earlier in, in ECB mode. Okay, same input. Now output looks something, something like this. Okay, if you use random IVs. Okay, got it? So what we have got so far is that ECB mode is deterministic, so it is not IND CPA secure. CBC mode is IND CPA secure if you use IV, okay, with changes, which is nonce, or approximation of it is a random number. Okay, encryption is not parallelizable, decryption is parallelizable. Okay, and if there's an, it's a more than multiple, size of multiple blocks, it, then we'll have to pad it. 
and I will use leaks uh, information, right? Okay, that's what we have studied. Now we can study in next five minutes CTR mode. Now what's the issue here? Why should we have another mode? So only thing that we have seen is that we have to have IV, which is extra effort, and which is a nonce, which is not a big deal because you know in your laptop also you can generate a pseudo random number. Okay. Encryption parallelism. Yeah, second is very good. Encryption is not parallelism. Okay. So let's try to solve this. Now here we have taken inspiration from one time pad. So one time pad, what we have seen, we never use a key. Key is changes every time, right? And we exclusive or with plain text and we get ciphertext. Okay. So now we are moving towards CTR taking the inspection from one time pad. Now this is a normal method, okay? If attacker doesn't know the key, the block cipher output looks random. Okay, so we are, we are taking inspiration from one, one time pad, right? Now, idea that we get is that, can we use a block ciphers to simulate one time pad? It means that somehow same key cannot, Although, you know, the encryption method, whatever you use, the key value is the same for encryption and decryption, but internally, can we change the key value within blocks, different blocks, okay? So let's see, how can we do this? So if the attacker doesn't know the key, all these output will look random, okay? Because the Okay, the key here is different in uh, one time pad, right? All right. So what we can do is that we take something here, will not define right now, use the key, some value here, use the key and then encrypt it using the key. Okay, now this becomes something. Okay, the, that output view exclusive or with a plain text, which is your P1, is a P2 and P3. Okay, and this becomes now C1. Okay, all right. So if we use, what do you use as an input to block cipher? The question is that what, what is this value then? Okay, and what is relationship of this to this one and so on? Okay, now you cannot send all these values separately to receiver, right? Okay, so all right, so what you can do, and you can send just one of these. So initial one, okay, so what we can do is that we'll have to find out what, what is going to be this value. We can now randomly pick up a number, which we'll call it nonce, and then every time we increment it by one. So this is a, this is a, a P1, sorry, yeah, this is a, this is uh, P1, this P2, P3, okay? This is uh, now first block, basically, uh, architecture corresponding first block. So use this value here, which, which you have generated in the beginning. Now in the second block, increase it by one. So you can see it's a one here, okay? And then, in the third block, when you use it, increase it by another one, so it becomes two, okay? And then you use this as an input and use the key and what output you get, you'll exclusive it to the plain text and you get a ciphertext. Now, essentially, what are we doing? We are doing one-time pad and the value which we are doing exclusive or becomes the key, modified key, okay? Because we are encrypting this one with a encryption algorithm. All right. 
So now we can paralyze this. Okay, all right. So what we can do is that first the method is as follows split M into blocks P1, P2, and so on. Choose a random nonce, this nonce, compute an output, and then you do this process exclusive or sorry. Encryption with the key, which could be AES or CES. Uh, okay, uh, and then uh, exclusive it or as one time pad with plain text and get this output C1, C2, or whatever. Now, description we can see is. Simple, right? What, what, what's the difference? Now here we are not decrypting it. We are using same encryption algorithm. Okay, as we're doing what? Because we are doing XOR here, one time pad. So you take the nonce. Now this nonce value is communicated. Now, of course, it's not mentioned here. This nonce value should be known. The first nonce that you use in encryption is sent to recipient. So that nonce value is known. Okay, you can see that is the same value that we are using here and here. Okay. And then you encrypt it with the key and they use this as exclusive or with the ciphertext. Okay, and you get the plain text. Okay, so mathematically you can see it works. So now we are what we are doing is encryption. We are not using encryption algorithm, we are doing the decryption. We are not using decryption algorithm. So there's a beauty. Okay. All right. So this again, we are shown the uh, same thing. How do we do it? Okay. All right. So efficiency is that can we paralyze this, of course, encryption? And this is decryption. Okay. Decryption earlier also we could paralyze. In earlier case, here also we can paralyze. Can we paralyze encryption? Yes, you can see that all these values are available. Nonce you can generate once. Once it's available, then you can it can be uh, used with increment in, for the second block processing, third block processing. That's all you need. Key remains the same, which are available, right? So if there are three processors, you know, or processing elements in a processor doing running this algorithm. Right, then this all these things calculation can be done in parallel. Similarly, decryption algorithm can be parallelized, and because there is no dependency. All right, and similarly, we can see how we can do padding. Okay. Oh, sorry, I missed one point here, which is that that we here in this case we don't need to pad, just cut off the part of XOR. That's longer than the message. Okay, because those bits are irrelevant. So please, uh, you can you can actually uh, find this out, right? All right. So now the, what we have learned is that A AES CTI is ND IND CPS secure. Nons must be randomly generated and never reused. Now within that same encryption for multiple blocks, of course you have to increment it. Okay. All right. What happens if you reuse the nonce? Of course, you leak some information. So it's equivalent to reusing keys in one time pad. All right. So this, if this is the input with CTR mode, what we get is here, which is as good as uh, what we have seen earlier in case of uh, CBC encryption. Okay. Of course, this this all we have discussed. All right, to summarize, ECV mode is deterministic. So it is not IND CPS secure because there is no randomness. Then we brought in randomness by giving, a, you know, using output, first using initial IV and then using this IV in some way in all blocks, right? We are not using exact IV, but output of encryption we are using as an input. So we are able to bring in randomness to other blocks. And we have seen CTR because in 
case of CBC, we cannot encrypt in parallel. So it's not very efficient algorithm. We wanted encryption, decryption, both to run in parallel. In CTR mode, we can do both encryption and decryption parallel, and it uses concept of one time pad. All right. So now you can go through this slide by yourself and see how do we compare these modes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any question? We'll start from here tomorrow. Excuse and me, sir. Then move down. Yeah. Uh, sir, can you tell whether the exam will be conducted in online or online or offline? 